far back as I can remember, I always wanted to be a gangster. Hello, this is Darren from the Psycho Semanticast, and you are listening to the Gangs of Hollywood. Hey gang, indeed you are listening to the Gangs of Hollywood, and that voice is my very first guest. He is the punk rock political heart of the Legion Podcasts. Welcome to the gang, Darren Wilson. It's good to be here, teacher, teacher. <laughs> I am the future, apparently. <laughs> no, no, see, I think if you were a teacher in this, you'd be Roddy McDowell all the way. Yeah, but unfortunately, I would have started as Roddy McDowell at the end of the movie, not Roddy McDowell. <laughs> just, would have been t- just straight away, just gun on the bench, just, just sit down and shut up. That's, that's kind of <laughs> All right, for, for our, our listeners that may not be familiar with your work, would you like to tell us about the Psycho Semanticast? Yeah, so uh, Psycho Semanticast is mostly, uh, you know, the catchphrase is politics, movies, and political movies. You know, uh, we, we just sort of try to explore that sort of commentary within things you know like uh you know like okay uh march march always has a purge month so we're doing purge election year which i mean it is an election year or planet of the apes or you know so i mean you can make just about especially me uh, i could make just about <laughs> anything political but <laughs> it's a little loose a lot of tangents and uh, love a tangent. yeah, gotta love, love a tangent. tangent. You know, some punk rock. This this is actually a movie that'll eventually be done on my show. So if you ever yes. want in on that, oh, you, you tell me when, and I am one hundred percent there because uh, I love this show. I love this. I love your show, and I love this movie. And for those of you that haven't quite caught up, we will be discussing one of my all-time favorite eighties movies, The Class of nineteen eighty-four. Class of 1984. Class of 1984. Their only goal is power. I run this school, man. Their only law is survival. If you want to survive around here, you have got to learn to look the other way. Their only allegiance is to themselves. Still believe in all that bullshit that holds it together. I pledge allegiance! Wise, you should have done me right. Like this! Hey, look what he's done, man! He tried to kill me! Somebody's got to stop this insanity. Well, you simply can't afford to fail this class. Now what is the answer? <gasps> I am the future. I am the future. I am the future. But you've taught before nothing like this has ever happened. All right, I gotta deal with it. Who's gonna protect you? He's one man trained to deal with students, but they've pushed him to the limit. They've gone too far. Now he's going to give the class of 1984 the lesson they deserve. (laughs) Class of 1984, is this the future? Take a look at my face. movie oh it's uh, you know it's it's clockwork orange it's nukem high it's after school special it, it's oh it's so so many things so um now that everyone's heard the trailer and you segue into that trailer we don't even know the trailer was going to be there perfectly <laughs> um 
Class of 1984 is from, of course, 1982, with the runtime of one hour and 38 minutes in the uh, unedited version. And we'll talk about the number of cuts and edits that uh, were done to this poor movie during the time. INDB says that there's something strange going on at the graffiti-covered Lincoln High, as teachers are carrying loaded weapons and the students have to walk through a metal detector before they enter the classroom. Before long, the school's new music teacher, Andrew Norris, will learn firsthand that it's even worse than it looks, as the drug-plagued institution is the territory of the charismatic Peter Stegman and his brutal gang of crazed followers. Now, under those dire circumstances, it's only a matter of time before the professor and the pupil lock horns with unforeseen consequences. Oh, a lot of, but, lot of consequences in this A lot of consequences for everyone involved. But of course, do drastic times call for drastic measures. In the end, is there a cure for violence? And I say yes, it's more violence. Yeah, it, that seemed to put an end to things. <laughs> Definitely escalated pretty quickly and then solved itself. Now, the rating on IMDb is a 6.6 out of 10, which I think is a little unfair. Um, and IMDb says this got an R rating, but uh, as we'll chat about when we get into the facts about the movie, this got ratings all over the shop depending on how hacked up it was. Oh, yeah, I, th- I believe I have the R rated version. I've, I've got the uncut version, so it's in its entirety, but I remember seeing this um, probably on VCR in potentially like 1983 or 1984, uh, and I remember that a lot of it was cut out. Ooh. I'm sure around but, the uh, the scene that takes place before the music recital, I'm sure that gets hacked yes. up quite quite a bit. Yeah, that gets hacked up, and um, I didn't, oddly enough, I didn't remember that there was nudity in this movie, but there really um, <laughs> really, really is. Really is. Uh, At the job and, interview. Yeah, that's one hell of a job interview. I'm kind of glad that I didn't have to do an interview. <laughs> Cocaine's a hell the, of a drug, know, as Rick James yeah, would yeah. say. <laughs> Ow! Um, this was directed by Mark L. Lester, another director that we'll hear from again on this show. His credits include Hitman's Run in 1999, Public Enemies in 1996, Extreme Justice in 1993, Showdown in Little Tokyo in 1991, and the sequel, allegedly, to this movie, Class of 1999, in 1990. Have you seen the the class of 1999 movies? It ha- it has been forever, but I myself was class of 99, so oh. I latched on to that bit. Yeah. Yeah, that that is uh it'll be a movie that we cover down the track, but it, it's it's not a it's not even I would say a shadow of this movie. This movie has been for it. Now, speaking of things that are going for it, the people starring in this movie that I made note of was of course Perry King as Andrew Norris. Um, he did a lot of TV and TV movies, but nothing will show again uh, except maybe The Lords of Flatbush. But that's a rom com, so I kind of doubt it. Um, and I only have a weird memory of The Lord of Flatbush. Yeah. I'm aware got, of it. Um, it's got Henry Winkler in it, I think. Oh, the Fonz. Yeah. I, I, there's something in my mind that says I'll have to look that up later. Or if anyone listening wants to look it up and tell me, go for it. <laughs> um, it also stars Mary Lynn Ross as Diane Norris. Now, she was also the, I think, the co-executive producer on this movie. I believe uh, so. and, and this was her last acting credit. Was it? Yes, which is quite interesting. So maybe that uh, that rather brutal scene before the uh, before the movie, I'm uh, sorry, before the uh, the orchestra scene uh, was a little bit too dramatic. For it. Yeah, that, and I mean, the last fifteen, eighteen minutes or so is pretty arduous for her character. Yeah, it's pretty pretty full on, yeah. pretty full on. Continuity and... be damned with the roof, with the <laughs> rooftop scene. Yeah, well, you know, continuity, that's why. <laughs> um, and, and speaking of the cause of all this trauma, we have Timothy Van Patten uh, playing Peter Stegman. Now, after ending his acting career in 1990, this guy has done a heap of directing. He did like 18 episodes of Boardwalk Empire, two episodes of Game of Thrones, and 20 episodes of The Sopranos. I had seen that. I was like, holy shit. And he wrote the piano part that he plays. Yes, yes. It's look, and I'm just like you see him in that. And he's you know quite young. It's just like oh my god, this guy's like seriously talented. Yeah, I, I was a little surprised. It had been a while since I had seen this, and it had been a while since I had seen this sober. Uh, you know, with with a critical eye going on. And, <laughs> yeah. It's, it's just quite quite amazing. Now, of course, we did mention uh, Roddy McDowell plays Terry Corrigan, and uh, he's got a gun, which I love. He does. A gun and a big, fat plaid tie. 
Yep. And uh, endless amounts of booze that just comes out of everywhere. Roddy Roddy's never without a drink in this movie, which I think is fascinating. You know, perhaps he makes it in his biology lab. Ooh, maybe. Well, you know, medical alcohol. It's yeah. fun for the whole family. <laughs> now, speaking of families, this movie has a very young Michael J. Fox in it. Um, now, this was the, the same year as he started in Family Ties, but three years before he hit it really big in Back to the Future. And he looks so young and has a terrible, terrible bald head. Yes, and rosy, rosy cheeks. Yes, yes. It's just like, I, I just, I, it fascinated me just seeing him the whole time going, you your stardom just rockets up from here just, <laughs> but you are incredibly yeah. awkward right now you and your henny youngman one-liner jokes in the band room <laughs> Uh, so this movie was written by Tom Holland, not that Tom Holland, and John Saxon, not that John Saxon, um, and was based on a story by Holland. Um, now, there's a lot of people that consider this to be uh, the modernisation of 1955's The Blackboard Jungle, which was a Sydney Hawaii movie, which is quite good. Oh, it's been a while since I've seen that. Yeah, I've not seen it in forever, but like I said, it's one of those ones that, like, if you say The Blackboard Jungle with Sydney Poitier, everyone seems to know it, or at least know it. Yeah, I've seen the poster, um, seen the box. Yeah, that's right, seen the box. Uh, and uh, speaking of the box, the, the box art for this is so good. Oh, so I, good. I love the one with, with Roddy McDowell just holding gun time class <laughs> the back with, the, with the knife behind back. That's so rad. Yeah. So I did mention earlier about the uh, the way this movie was uh, cut down to be released. So the original UK cinema release featured the R-rated US print minus the nudity, and then they cut another four minutes fourteen out of uh, that copy. They took out the gang fight, the rape scene, Fallon's arm being sliced off with a buzzsaw. That bit I love so much. Oh, that's um, a good scene. The, yeah, the bit where Stegman slashes Diane's chest on the rooftop. And then um, I think there's a couple of bits where Norris hits Barnyard in the head with the wrench. They, like, reduced that down so it didn't look as bad as did, despite the fact that he died. Um, <laughs> That's what his... Okay, I kept calling him Dim because I knew that this was also slightly influenced by Clockwork Orange, right? Yes, yes. I kept... Yeah, yeah. He's, the his name character. was Barnyard, Barnyard, and I think there was Barnyard... Oh, I'm actually... Barnyard, Barnyard Drugstore, right. Fallon... And Patsy. Patsy, who gropes herself in just about every scene. Yeah, but Patsy's... Yeah, Patsy's... Uh, Patsy, Patsy, Patsy made me want to wash. <laughs> she, just, she just said she's got every potential communicable disease known to man. And, she's, uh, <laughs> and that's, I mean, that's dedication to acting, because I had seen that she was kind of a prissy girl in real life so she did not yeah. like she did not like the punk club scene because mm. all the actors were just people that would be at that punk bar They're, yeah that, that's exactly it i mean because I, I looked at the rest of her credits and everything else she plays you know like preppy and cheerleadery and all that sort of stuff and this is such a massive step away from anything else so I'll give her credit she definitely definitely pulled her off um hey, hey. Hey, hey. um now, in the 2005 version of this, um, that's where they re-added the scene that we were just talking about where Sally uh, gets undressed and is naked. Uh, that was originally cut out, and there was a couple other bits that were taken out. Oh, and they also added in, you know, the prologue that comes at the start, which explains, you know, like uh, the amount of attacks and everything else. Oh, 280,000 and... incidents last year. Yeah, <laughs> some uh, just absolutely stupid number. And then, like, no high, high school is as bad as Lincoln High yet. Yeah, dot, and dot, then the dot, bit, yet. Dot, dot, dot. And the epilogue that comes in is, you know, Andy Norris was never prosecuted as the police couldn't find anyone who actually saw <laughs> <laughs> I'm just going, yeah. I, I could have lived without that. I could have just gone, yeah. Because, I, I, see, in, in my mind, Norris wouldn't have cared if he'd gone to jail after that. No. This is what I, because I did it. Fuck him. Yeah. Shit. What are you going to do? <laughs> yeah, that's right. It's all over now. It's done. Um, so I did mention that this has uh, two sci fi themed sequels, loosely based on this, which was the class of 1999, and the director video version, which was, uh, I think it was called Class of 1999. Two, the Substitute, which was in 1994. I remember the first one had, um, oh, I can't remember her name. I'm getting a blank. Uh, the I want to say coffee, and it's not coffee. The, oh, Pam Greer? That's right. It has Pam Greer in it, and she has to wear very awkward prosthetics still in the end. Um, and no doubt I will cover that, although I have covered it on my other show, which versus the Beam Saker. I guarantee it. I'll leave it. 
Oh, and I see Malcolm McDowell's in that too. He is. And yes, Stacy Keach. So oh, Stacy Keach in class of nineteen ninety nine has a bleach white mullet, <sighs> um, reverse um, color contacts, and eats a banana a lot. <laughs> It, it's very weird, very very weird. And if you just focus on on the Stacy Keach pass, it's very disturbing. Hmm. Does he have a mustache, or is he letting his hair lip show? No, no, he's got a mustache. He, he, he's got a uh, he, he's he's got a a thirties just like line mustache, just like down and across. That uh, in that from memory, I think he might even have a little goatee. Possibly, I think it's been a while since I've seen it. I think the it's only... not good. It's not good. <laughs> it, it's just, it's just it's just not. It's not good. I think the only time I've Either seen way, him clean shaven was American History X. Yes, yes, and I'm going to do that movie at some point as well when I when I can when I can bring myself. I'll probably watch American History X and Romper Stomper you know, together. Ooh, to get those out of the way. That, that's go. going to be a hard. Yeah, I, I would I would probably save Romper Stomper for the second one. <laughs> and ending wise, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, definitely. A little bit of that. All right, so we've talked about the bits and bots around the movie. Let's get into exactly what happens. So, as we mentioned, Andrew Norris is a new teacher at the Troubled Inner City School. As he arrives on his first day, he meets fellow teacher Terry Corey, played Roddy, as we mentioned, who is quite clearly carrying a gun in his briefcase. When Andrew asks about the firearm, Terry assures him he will learn why protection is necessary when they enter the school. Andrew was shocked to see everyone scanned by metal detectors and frisked. He spots a student with a knife, the security guard lets the kid go because they are so overworked. And that has to be like the worst metal detector setup I'd ever seen. Yeah, uh, it's too late. They're already two yeah, feet too, away from me. Yeah, he's already gone. I like, I, I like how like like barnyard hands like drugstore just the straight razor just around the outside of the, <laughs> the metal detector. Like, eh, you know what do you mean? Yeah, it didn't bing, so it must be okay. Yeah, I mean, is it, this this is this is pre nine eleven America. Yeah, so the security was a little bit more lax, but. Yeah, I mean they are they are t- they are uh, allowing more teachers to have guns at school now, so it was yep. a little prophetic. <laughs> yeah, that's right. More more guns for everybody. That'll solve coronavirus. Yep. Um, <laughs> shoot it. That. That's how you do it in America. You shoot it. <laughs> shoot the virus. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so the halls of the school are covered in graffiti. Andrew learns that he's expected to patrol the halls as a security guard during his off periods. In his first class, a group of five disruptive students are roughhousing and causing trouble. The leader of the gang is Peter Stegman, the only member of the group who is actually registered in that class. They all eventually walk out and Andrew discovers the rest of the students actually want to learn, especially Arthur, who wants the trumpet, and Deneen, who plays the clown. And, um, Michael J. Fox playing the trumpet is not no no he, he did not either he's very sad no yeah. he, didn't, he didn't didn't research but he did for the guitar a couple years later maybe he learned his lesson from this maybe so that's a story <laughs> now as um as andrew gets to know the school and the area he decides that he wants to put together an orchestra with his more advanced students um meanwhile peter's gang is selling drugs uh and catches one of their rivals leroy in the uh I suppose, in the boys' room, and beats him up for being a rival dealer. Enough is enough. Hey, man, listen, I didn't do nothing, man. What the fuck? Think I was born yesterday? Hey, man, what's going on here? Get out! We're the only n*** that sells shit in this school. You just told me to go up there, man. I just told them that I'm... Look, you tell Juju if he wants to play to meet us after school. Got that? A liberal use of the N word in there, which I thought was a little surprising, but about right for the eggs. Yeah, and I mean these guys. I don't know if these guys go a scene without wanting that one of them sieg hailing or having a swastika. Oh no, I'm pretty sure it's on absolutely everything. Oh, I'm gonna buy better stuff. Nah, I'm, I'm fighting a cold. Sorry, um, I, I've, I've purposefully not been smoking anything for a couple of days. But um, if has, has that working out for you? 
I've been having more trouble sleeping. Uh, but yeah, sorry. But if, if you need to cut that bit out, uh, we're nah, talking about them and the swastikas. Yeah, that. Yeah, this is this is a point where like Nazi symbolism was just a sign of rebellion, not the sign of just unstable lunatics and the alt right. Yeah, they were especially. Oh shit! What does he say? Ich bin ein Stedman. Yes, it's been well. like Stedman, and they and then they all just crack out a nice Nazi salute. Just, I think it's to solidify that they are just truly evil and anti-establishment, which is really weird when you think about how Nazis. Yeah. Um, yeah. But they're uber moving on from that. They are. Well, they are the We uh, eventually Andrew gets home, and he, we find out that his wife is recently pregnant, and they are still unpacking their new home. Now, Stegman and his gang face off against Juju, who is the rival uh, rival gang leader, who uh, obviously they've got a dispute about to drive the rights in, in the school, and they have a bit of a gang fight uh, around se- the 17-minute mark with pipes and chains versus knives. And I just sort of went, yeah, it seems like Juju's guys were really unprepared. Yeah, uh, you know, and especially for, this isn't a ambush. I mean, this is everybody's walking down the sidewalk... Going yeah, underneath it's the pass, yeah. you know, yeah. I was like, "Well, bring shit. a gun." <laughs> I didn't know we were going to have to fight in this whole gang drug dealing scene. Yeah. Whoops. Yes. <laughs> um, we'll see how it goes. Uh, anyway, so that that is badly. The police turn up, break it up. Now Stegman's gang managed to steal the teacher's contact sheet, and they follow Andrew and taunt him. Uh, they go near his house, and uh, that's what they spray him with, uh, with with fake blood or something. Fake blood or blood from the people they beat up. I mean, it was, uh, Norris says that it's fake blood. Yeah, but knowing Stegman, it probably could have been actual blood with Hepsi. Yeah, uh, probably it's probably Patsy's blood. It's they've got all sorts. Of <laughs> Biological warfare, man. He's, I mean, he is a teenage kingpin with soldiers and people doing job interviews in the office he has yes <laughs> now i was, I was I'm literally going to get to that so Stig, they they eventually get to uh get to a, a punk gig um and you know they they go there and have a bit of a, a dance and like so this is where we get our first bit of nudity it's a very quick boot flash 20 minute mark and uh, eventually stegman and his gang head to the back room where they run their business which includes um prostitution coke and, whore, huh? <laughs> yes, Sally the Coco, who uh, is quite promptly asked to strip naked and try out for the role. Uh, and uh, yes, she spends some time with Fallon while uh, yes, while Patsy watches. And again, I reckon he just got a disease just from Patsy watching. Yeah, she she was the most into it too. Uh, oh, she she yeah, instigated yes. it. She brought the girl in. Yeah, the, uh, I think this Patsy's just a predator. Just a... <laughs> Pink-haired Patsy uh, predator. There you go. Alliteration, well, ladies and gentlemen. All right, we return back to school, and Andrew is confronted with more evidence of Peter's crimes and the, rele- and the revelation that he is an accomplished classic pianist. And as you mentioned earlier, that piece was actually written by the, uh, by the person that plays Stegman. And clearly, he's actually playing it, which was quite impressive, I thought. Yeah, I, I, I'm hearing the song in my head right now. Um, and yeah, do I get the gig, teacher? Do I get the do gig? Do I get the fucking gig? No. No, yes. Because so, you, you know, in the washroom, we're showing our Canadianness. because this was a U.S. Canadian thing. So they call the bathroom yes. the washroom. Or they call the washroom yes. the washroom. However you want to call it. But Yeah, the, the place where all the toilets are. Yeah. Ah, there we go. Yeah, so the the two uh, grow increasingly at odds, including obviously the drug bust that we just mentioned in the toilets, and Ste- where Stegman manages to convince the principal, who is freaking useless in my book, uh, that he's he's not to blame, and uh, the, the drugs were just there. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, well, the, the, another thing that I think took influence from these movies were Dangerous Minds and yes. One Eight Seven. Oh, yes. the prince! I haven't seen White Seven for ages. It, I I saw I rewatched it a couple of years ago uh, when I was um, mining it for sound bites and stuff, and I was like, you know what? I, I should just recheck this movie out. And yeah, the principal is like, well, they're gonna sue, so we we got to let them do whatever the fuck they want. 
Yeah, that, that's right. You didn't actually see him do it, and yeah, they'll, they'll, they'll cry. Lawyer. So just let him do it. All while this is happening, young Jimmy, who's a friend of Arthur, Michael J. Fox, uh, who is uh, clearly out of his skull on, I think it was Angel Dust, PCP or something. Something. Um, I've never done anything so that made me do that. But No, in all honesty, never done anything that made me want to climb a flagpole because um, that requires a lot of energy. Yeah. Um, yeah. Anyway, he, as I said, he climbs a flagpole and eventually falls rather awkwardly to his death at the 34 minute mark. Wake up, you guys! Come on! to the flag of the United States of America. One nation under God, indivisible with liberty and justice for all. And everyone is very sad for a little while. <laughs> a little bit. We seem to move on pretty quick. Yeah, you know, gotta gotta move on. You gotta make that paper. You gotta mm. uh, intimidate those witnesses. Well, exactly. That's right. Stigman and his gang uh, stop Arthur on the way home uh, and obviously intend to intimidate him so he doesn't squeal on them. And uh, quite surprisingly, Andrew and Terry see this happen and uh, attempt to break it up, which results in Andrew and Terry both being injured. And uh, Terry's quite clear that he doesn't want to go to a hospital because he'll have to report it. Uh, he just wants to go home and have his wife stitch him up. And you get the feeling it's probably not the first time. Yeah, I mean, that's probably why he drinks so much. Yeah, yeah, that needs to still from yeah. <laughs> God Goddamn um, so Goddamn, little bastards. Um, so eventually, later that night, the gang returns to Andrew's home while he's in bed and firebomb his car. I thought, yeah. that's a pretty pretty severe escalation, really. It, it is. It, 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 it escalates quickly and then it doesn't stop there. No, no, it's just like they just put their foot down and it's all off from there. Um, meanwhile, Andrew tries to convince his wife to leave, but she refuses to leave and only wants to stay with him, which I just went, you just go. <laughs> Someone, you know, if someone set fire to my car, I'm packing all my stuff and I'm out. I quit my job, gone. Yeah, but you know, <laughs> if I guess there was still that early 80s recession going on but True. she i mean as she says later you know when she does decide that she wants to leave and gets talked into staying yeah. i'm just gonna go hang out with my mom yeah yeah great Get idea a job. yeah yeah Get a job. i'll carry the load <laughs> uh <laughs> we 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 get to the next day and find out that not only have they firebombed uh, Andrew's car, but they've also tortured and killed all of the animals in Terry's biology lab. And that was pretty ugly. That that you know they've, yeah. they've, they've spit roasted them, they've sliced them up, they've smashed them, and it's just really just you don't kill animals. That's just crazy. yeah. There's yeah. There's blood everywhere. Those are real dead animals. They were not killed yes. for the movie, but they did yes, they make just... people sick. <laughs> yes, they did make us sick, and, and rightly so. You know, not everyone can handle the. Uh, Seeing animals which it quite uh, so it's a bit gross, but delicious. Um, now, sorry to all you vegans. Uh, <laughs> now, eventually, Andrew and Peter wind up in uh, in the bathroom together, uh, and you know Andrew's like really fired up, and you know he you can see that he wants to punch um, Stegman right in the face, he wants to get him, uh, but Stegman knows he's got him, and uh, can and then decides to just throw himself into the mirror and beat himself up and claiming that Stegman, uh, not Stegman, that Andrew actually attacked him and goes to the principal. The bit where he f smashes his face on the sink. Oh, I was just yeah. like, oh, That's <laughs> I could feel it in my teeth. I could feel, I, I just, I, I actually like put my hand up to my mouth just going, oh, I just, you know, that was like around the 47 minute mark. And it's just like, oh, and you know. Ah. Yeah, the fight club scene. Yeah, yes, yes, very much so the Fight Club scene. And, and, you know, obviously that, that means that uh, Andrew is now in a lot of trouble. 
Yeah. And Stegman gets to go home. Stegman's now, rich. I'm, I'm gonna. Uh, yep. Stegman's rich. She's well. That's right. They've got security in their apartment. He's home. Mom's a single mom who obviously is more focused on her outfits. Her genius than, baby boy else. is a perfect angel. Yes, he's a he's a genius. You don't understand. No, he's a thing. Um, let me ask you a weird question. When Stegman's watching television, is that Linda Carter? I thought Cause so. Because it looks like Linda Carter. She doesn't get a credit anywhere in it. But I looked at it. I, I, I swear that was Linda Carter. I tried to find in uh, the trivia about it if it said what he was watching, and I couldn't find anything. No. So the, maybe the, it was I, taken I, without permission. Wow. Well, it's the age. You, know, yeah. you steal stuff. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so, you know, Andrew turns up, tries to convince his mother, and as we mentioned, his mother is completely blind to anything that uh, Steg doing. And uh, as as he's leaving, Stegman taunts Andrew using the intercom, and we get the line, I am the future, uh, which is so cool. Teacher, teacher. Learn your lessons. Mommy didn't like you very much. Lay off me! Lay off me, Stegman, you hear me? Shut up, you son of a bitch. You ever come here again, and I'll kill you. I swear it. You're mine, asshole. All mine. I am the future. You hear that? I am the future. <laughs> Look at my face. I am Thank future. you, Alice. You didn't mention that Alice plays the theme song on this. It's so good. I love it. Take a look at my face. I am the future. How do you like me now? Yep. Ladies and gentlemen, the rendition is done. Bye. Short and, enough um, not to violate copyright law. That is correct. <laughs> um, in retaliation, Andrew hotwires Peter's car and smashes it up in the garage, which I thought was just like, that's the ultimate fuck you. Just like, yep. Yep. And then he locks the door at the end. <laughs> yeah, yeah. After smashing the window and he just walks away, locks the door. Go, no, no, yeah, do the right thing. Make sure the door's locked. <laughs> uh, so, um, next day, Stegman obviously confronts him and, you know, it goes crazy. And conveniently, there's a security guard there. And uh, the gang happens to see that what they think is Arthur squealing on them to uh, to Andrew, and they decide that uh, they're going to basically. Yep. So uh, he gets uh, he gets stabbed during a food fight. Oh yeah, uh, the lunchroom shanking. Is- Yes. Yeah, that's right. You know, it's not only for prisons, boys and girls. It's for school lunch rooms as well. Well, I guess I, I do want to ask you, is it shanking if it's with a knife or is it a stabbing? Is it a shanking when it's a makeshift when knife? it's a shiv? Yeah. yeah. I, I don't know. I, I think it's a technicality. It should be a it should be a makeshift blade of some sort. That would make it technically a shanking or a shiving, if you will. Um, with a proper knife, yeah, it's probably just a stabbing. Um, anyone that's done a little bit of research in that field, <laughs> Not sure. Maybe you've got to do time to understand that. Maybe it has to be in a prison condition. Maybe. But this was a, definitely an orchestrated distraction, diversion, mm. stabbing. Yes, it was definitely illustrated. Uh, yeah, we, we see the, the, the alleged food fight and, and the brawl that goes with it. And everyone can everyone can see that, you know, Stegman makes sure he's quite visible up on the stairs when it happens, but it's quite clear that they are as uh, We then get a scene with uh, Andrew and Terry and their wives having a barbecue, and Terry is uh, drinking heavily. <laughs> and, and quite a, quite quite obviously, you know, the, the shirt's not tucked in, he's got a big jacket on, and he's just drinking. He's, just, he, he, he's, gone, with the, he's gone past the pretense of hiding it, He's now just openly dangerous. Yeah, the disheveling of Corrigan has escalated. Yeah, it's escalated. He's, he is a broken, broken man. And in the next scene, we find out how broken he is because uh, he's holding a class at hostage at just over the mark. And, and I'm going to say, this is my absolute favorite scene. When he's sticking the gun into the like, each of the gang members' faces, yeah. asking the biology questions. Yeah. How many <laughs> chambers are there in the human heart? No, 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 no. <laughs> <laughs> this is oh so good. That's the first one you've got right. I'm just going. Please get it wrong. Please get it wrong. Please get it wrong. <laughs> yeah, um, I'm sorry. Uh, eventually- That's the wrong answer. Answer. Yes. <laughs> oh, so good. Um, eventually, Andrew does manage to get in there and you know, get the get the gun away. But it, it's it's clear that you know Terry is just he, he's he's broken beyond all repair and uh, later that night we see him with his track the track the gang to the back of the punk club and trying to run them over with his car and almost succeeds with with uh, peter on the bonnet yeah just smashing in the cars and everything else oh, that's that's so good that's so good that's like that was one of those ones where like there was you felt like there was legitimate jeopardy 
you know, someone you get the feeling that some of the stuntmen had to have gotten hurt during during that scene. Oh yeah, it's great, great, I love it. Now we cut back to the hospitalised Arthur, who finally admits who stabbed him, and uh, and eventually we find out that it's Vinny, who clearly Stegman put him up to it. And uh, now, according to really according to the notes that I had, he apparently goes to a youth detention centre, although you never actually see it. Yep, he just yeah, you know, he he only had two days on set, I guess. Yeah, that's right. It's two days. Let's just say you went to prison. Went to live on a farm and never came back. <laughs> farm upstate. Uh, yes. Now we're we're now cutting to um, the night of Andrew's orchestra and its first concert. So he's getting ready. He's looking good. He leaves uh, the lovely Diane home while he goes to the school. And this is where we get the scene where Peter's gang breaks into the house and gang breaks in. <laughs> remember seeing this originally and just like being horrified because it's quite brutal yeah uh, it's oh and yeah they're laughing and i mean even the the body movements are brutal yes. and disjarring and dudes fallon swinging his fucking chain in her face and uh patsy or that's her name the girl yeah patsy she's yeah, patsy. smoking in the corner watching and taking polaroids and shit it's just real. It's just real jarring. Um, and of course, the the Polaroid is later delivered to the school, um, where Andrew's just about to start the concert, and um, he then proceeds to chase the gang through the through the darkened school. And this is where it gets very horrible. I think. Yeah, the last eighteen yeah. twenty minutes. Yeah, you know, it really it, it, the violence and gore level escalates. You know. Andrew uh, is chasing the gang through the school, and he, you know, kills them off one by one, Jason Voorhees style, if you will. Um, you know, you get Fallon on the bench saw. You know, that bit where he gets his arm sawn off is so good. Yeah, and then oh, and then spine straight down on oh, the blade, just yeah, and you can he- hear it struggling. It's like yeah, just uh, thundering through his back, and that's it. You get um, drugstore who get- is caught set alight. <laughs> <laughs> um, in the auto shop, but it's just like it, it's funny when he he sort of sees that he's standing in a in a pool of petrol and just goes, Dah! and Andrew just sets him on fire and he does the dance of the oh, You know, and now that scene where where Barnyard and Patsy come in and see him, that was one of the scenes that was originally cut out because uh, it's really quick. But you see that he's all like, you know, just burned up and scarred and looking all grody, which is great. Um, you then get the bit with Barnyard Blessed finding him with the pipe. Um, and, and this one's pretty telegraphed. You know, they're standing underneath the hoist with a car, uh, fighting, and I'm going, any second, any second now, he's going to hit one of those, one of those supports and the car's coming down. But oh no, Patsy loses her mind, jumps in a car that's in auto shop, which conveniently has petrol and the keys in it, <laughs> and attempts to. And attempts to uh, run over Andrew, uh, but unfortunately knocks out the supports, crushing Barnyard and killing herself. And her last croaking words is that, uh, obviously, Peter is on the roof with me. Yeah, so our semi-hero Norris did not kill a girl. No, no, he did not kill a girl. She killed herself. And I reckon he probably got <laughs> just by being near her blood sprays. It's just any number of people see this just shot. Um, so we get upstairs 
in uh, Stegman is holding Angel's wife Diane hostage. He, you know, threatens him, and, and like Stegman's now completely unstoppable. He's pushing and pushing, and he slices open Diane's chest, which is another scene that got got cut. They scuffle and uh, and obviously fight. There, there's a bit of back and forth. Stegman falls through the window and is hanging by the ropes, and like you know, he's a little panicked. Don't let me die! Don't let me die! And just as as Andrew is reaching out to to save him because you know he he's, he thinks that there's a moment of redemption, Stegman tries to knife him one last time. Goes sucker! Tries to slice him. Andrew punches him like fair square in the face. And you see the one of the best scenes in the movie. Stegman falls through all of the all of the ropes, all the supports, all of the ceiling of the auditorium, and he's just his body is hanging by the ropes, just dangling, covered in blood, and you get a real close up of his face uh, at the like one minute thirty four in full view of the audience. And, and it's such a good end. It's just, you know, you, you, they sort of close out on Andrew and Diane up on the roof, just completely exhausted, totally wasted, fade out, and then like get the quick save. Never charge because no one saw it. No one saw it happen. And don't worry, Diane, it's all over, except for the trauma that you just went through and are <laughs> going to be fucked yeah, up about yeah. for a while. Yeah, yeah. And the fact that you're going to have a child is just like a permanent problem. But that's okay. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Go stay with your mum. I shouldn't now, yeah. um <laughs> As I mentioned, uh, my favorite scene in this movie is Terry's psychotic break and holding a stew's hostage. Uh, what about you, mate? Yeah, that was that was it. And my second favorite was Fallon on the table saw. Cool. I'll right, we'll play a quick clip of uh, Terry's psychotic break so you can enjoy it as well. And we'll be right back. Well, you, you shouldn't be in here, Andrew. What are you doing? I'm teaching. Can't you see that? You uh, tell us the factor for the female of the species. Stand up when the teacher talks to you. Wait a minute, Terry. No. Andrew. I don't come into your class and tell you how to teach now. What is the answer, please? Well, you simply cannot afford to fail this class. Now, what is the answer? <gasps> what is the answer? Uh, please. Uh, uh, why? Why? <laughs> you see how simple it is? <laughs> oh, you know, he has never, never answered a question in this class. I'm only teaching them. Oh, tell me, tell me. How many chambers are there in the human heart? Four. I, th- I think four. It's wonderful. Oh, it's a pleasure. It's just... Oh, such a tremendous pleasure. I th- Mr. Stegman, mm. what is an amphibian? You should know... We had such a wonderful display hanging on our wall. You don't know. It's too bad. You do not pass. Work with him, Jerry. Oh, but Andrew, it would take such an awful lot of work. And this would be so much easier. Um... All right, so for me, leader of the pack on this has to be Roddy McDowell as Terry Corrigan. He's like the only character that I have an emotional connection with in, in this movie. Everyone else can just die. Yeah, we are in sync tonight, sir. I mean, look, anything that Roddy McDowell does is always fancy, but he, he plays the the broken man so well. Yeah, and he, you know, he he's the only one in the entire movie that really scares the kids. The kids aren't even scared of Andrew Norris until he kills no. them. <laughs> that's really, that that's going to extremes. Yeah, yeah but, but Roddy McDowell is just, he's got them trembling in school. And then he doesn't go to jail. <laughs> he gets to do no. his rampage later, so that's nice. Oh, that's, that's, but yeah, well, he, <laughs> he just let just let him off. He'll be fine. Yeah, it's already spring break. break. What's he gonna do? Yeah, it's <laughs> spring break. All right. Uh, for a rating, I give this movie a very solid four and a half out of five. What about you, mate? Yeah, I had it just. Uh, I could probably go four and a half. I wasn't when I, I didn't know if you were doing halves. So I had it at four. But if we're doing halves, can, I would give it four and a half. You can have a half. I'll, I'll, I'll All right. Uh, I, I won't have a break and try to hold you. <laughs> <laughs> All right, uh, 
for anyone, as I mentioned earlier on, that may not know you or your show, this is your opportunity to tell them where to find you. Yeah, uh, so Psychosemantic, or Psychosemantic Cast is on most of your uh, podcast catching places. I might have got kicked off Spotify, uh, but I'm not sure. But it's everywhere else, and it's... Also on the Legion Podcast Network, uh, over on Twitter, where you'll find a lot of my doctored photographs of politicians. It's at Political Movies. Otherwise, look up Psychosemantic everywhere else. Um, yeah, I think that's it. And on the Legion Podcast Network? Yes, it is on the Legion Podcast Network. Yes. And I highly recommend you checking it out. I learned everything I know about politics from Darren Shaw. Well, and you can hear this wonderful gentleman talk about movies such as Romper Stomper over on our back catalog. Yeah, that was from Romper Stomper and um, Rollerball. Rollerball. That was, Rollerball was our first one. It was. That's going way back. Way back with my super shitty Photoshop. <laughs> Your Photoshop's pretty cool. It wasn't right. supposed to be a game. <laughs> Um, coming up on our next episode in two weeks' time, we'll be joined by another fantastic guest and discuss our first mobster movie in The Untouchables. Ooh. Remember, be a good fella and uh, leave a rating or review on whichever app you're listening to the show on and make sure you share it with the rest of your gang on Twitter, Facebook and Instagram as GOHpod and at www.gohpod.com. Most of all, make sure you say hello to your little friend for me. Future. 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 Future.